Hello YouTubers. Welcome back to my shop. It's been kind of a long weekend. Uh, Friday morning we had kind of an emergency run to Georgia. So I had to drive, or my wife drove, from uh, Lima, Ohio to Wrens, Georgia. And then we ended up in Savannah, Georgia, which is pretty much about 12, 13 hour drive. And then on Monday we drove back home. So we just got home last night about close to 7 o'clock. And I'm way behind on videos, commenting on videos, and there's been a couple videos made for my benefit. Thanks Tom Lipton and Paul Compton. I watched them. I just couldn't, uh, kind of a pain to comment on them when you're watching them on a uh, smartphone. And I got back, well I got the message that it was here on Friday I guess, but I got back home and found a package from my buddy Redneck Prepper. So let's look at this and then we'll go take a look at my lathe real quick. I am so far behind this spring I haven't done anything in my garden yet. I've got today off work, it's Tuesday. I'm going to try to get a bunch of outside work done. i got to finish mowing and I, the grass was so high i got to rake. So let's take a look at this first. My buddy sent me this. It says, Dear Buck, Redneck said he didn't have any more use for me. I was only used two times when he had a Bridgeport mill. Will you find a home and use me here? Signed. The height gauge. So I thought that was neat. My wife got a kick out of it. And I got a nice height gauge here. Don't want to fall. Let me set this out of the way. And what I did was I rolled my granite surface plate over here to put it on. So I've got a nice height gauge. It's got the pointer. Looks like a carbide tip on it. And here's the little hold down to hold it on the arm here. yet so I don't know for sure. There we go. And this is adjustable to set your zero on the table down here on the plate. Magnifying lens so us old guys can see what we're trying to look at. Fine tune adjustment. Yep, this will come in handy. Thanks, Tony. Let's go over the lathe and measure some things. Okay, there's my lead screw. The diameter is. Eight eighty point eight eight that time I got point eight six six eight six nine Eight six nine. Okay. 
come out to pretty close to one inch. Point nine 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 five. surprised me. I didn't think it was even going to be close. Right there it's exactly one inch. That looks like it's on the centers. The flats on those. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me get a thread gauge. That looks like it eight three threads per inch. I thought it was gonna be goofier than that. Now let's uh I guess I gotta put you back on the tripod, I think. And try uh what Paul Compton was showing me. I don't know if you could hear it, but uh it was raining. So it doesn't look like I'm going to be mowing this morning. Get some of this other stuff done. The more important stuff. Be right back. Okay, I have the uh, thread half nuts locked on the number one. I have my dial indicator on zero. I have a line marked right here. I don't know if you can see it. It's hard to see. And I'm going to turn my chuck to rotate the lead screw one full turn and we'll see on here how far it goes. Here comes my mark. One full turn. Moved my carriage one twenty five or so. If I want, got clear down on my mark, yeah, it's one twenty five. One. Two looks like it's two and a half, which would be a quarter inch. Three. Four. Four moved it a half an inch, which figures because it's eight threads per inch. Hmm. Paul's was four threads per inch. Let's check the other things he did. Be right back. I do have a new set of the half nuts and they lock in there just fine. Let's try some of these other tests. It's going to be hard because I don't have the digital readout. But I'll just have to use a tape measure somehow or another. 
this is the one thing that still has me bugged. Um, I've got it locked in on the number one right now using that faint little line right there. If I unlock it and go to the next line, see how much it's off of that little line? And go to the three and it locks in right there. The next line, even a little farther. The five, back it up a little, right there. This line, there. And the seven, it'll lock in just in front of it or clear over there. Now I'm wondering if these marks are in the wrong place and if there's some place around here that all the numbers would engage. I'm kind of doubting it. Because right there's the one. Now will it engage right at nine o'clock? Nope. I don't know, I was thinking about making a little piece of paper and putting on there and locking it in and marking where each one of those lines are at and see if there's any one of those spots that they all engage at. Or is it like right there somewhere? Let's see if I can uh, figure out how to go from one line to the next line to the next line and one full revolution is probably going to be two inches. Let me get a tape measure. Okay, I think things are going to get screwy now. I've got the one right on the little line there. I've got one inch right along the edge of this. Now if I move one mark, that's a quarter inch. Go to the next mark. Half an inch. Three quarter. Two inch, but it doesn't, it looks like I'm losing a little bit. It's actually uh, one and fifteen sixteenths. About two and three sixteenths. On the seven, the line before the one. Now let's go clear to one. And it has been. You can't quite see it. Let me move you over just a little bit. See, I'm just about just shy of being an eighth of an inch short of two inches. Two inches of travel. Make sure I was right on the mark. Yes, I'm right on the mark of one and right on the one inch mark. So one full turn of the dial. And I'm pretty close to an eighth inch short of being two inches of travel. What do you make of that? Thanks for watching and thanks for all the help so far.